Welcome everyone. I am here with Paul Pachugan. We are going to do an orientation video for Steam or Steam Peak. And right away, I'm going to jump into a screen share of Steam Peak. What we're going to see here first is Paul's new profile. Now, he just started a few days ago. Uh, I've known him from before Steam from how long has that been, Paul? Probably six years, seven years? Yeah, about that. We connected on uh, Google Plus back in the day. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a better way of saying it. We, we weren't like <laughs> super close, but we were connected with a very large photography community on Google Plus for uh, about a year, maybe less. It was a very hot place to be for tens of thousands of photographers. They were all gathering on Google Plus and we had a lot of fun. And now Paul's new to Steam Peak. Uh, we are at Steam Peak wanting to do some orientation videos. He has graciously accepted, which is a great thing because then you get to see beautiful pictures. Paul's located in Western Australia, which you can see here. He has figured out a few things on his own, but we're gonna kind of recap everything start to finish so that you, uh, a new user, or maybe just kind of uh, dabbling to see if you enjoy it or you've been on it for a little while and want to connect with, maybe there's some things that you're missing. This will be a great video for you, kind of all inclusive. Paul has uh, introduced me to a few questions he's had, but I wanted to start with kind of a solid foundation. All right, anything first off, Paul, before we, uh, begin the orientation no let's dive right in all right so what i wanted to explain and and maybe we're not going to uh jump around can you see the cursor by chance yes, yes. i know i don't have the the little circle around that some people do when they do the screen share presentations but uh, we will survive so first of all steam with two e's and peak with an A. <laughs> so Steam with two E's is the name of, now don't get distracted here, it is the name of a blockchain. It is a name of a currency or what we like to call a token. Um, mm -hmm. They can kind of be interchanged. So Steam is the name of a blockchain. Steam is the name of a currency. Um, not to further confuse things, but there's a lot of businesses or applications that are connected with this whole system that also use the the word steam we like using the word steam as you can see our company and our website are both called steam peak so you're going to find a lot of things that are steam related even things inside of the the way things work that use the word steam so we'll talk about Steam Power, and, uh, and there's a company called Steam It, and they've made a website called Steam It. <laughs> so just like us, they, we have Steam Peak, they have Steam It, you know, and uh, that's the name of our companies, and that's the name of the websites. So blockchain. Now, this is a technology that not a lot of people are presently familiar with, but everyone will eventually be familiar with it just like it used to be that no one knew what what's email what's internet they were technologies that no one was familiar with and blockchain is one of those things that is a new technology that is starting to get used and maybe doesn't have any particular application that's super used like email or internet but blockchain is a technology that will begin to be used quite a bit blockchain my favorite way to describe it it is a public database meaning uh, me paul or anyone else watching can add data information like words like blog posts as we're seeing here his most recent one 15 hours ago contains a bunch of words and it contains uh, now, it doesn't actually contain these pictures because the blockchain can't be that large. Pictures are very large. 
all it contains is a is links to the pictures wherever they exist. So all this is just uh, basically characters, letters, and numbers that are stored into a public database. Okay, and his use of adding tags at the end is also stored into this. So he's made a post and he's put in words. He's put in a title at the, at the front. So adventures in Antarctica. And then he's put in words. He's put in links to pictures. He's put in tags. And then he has submitted this information to go to the blockchain. Okay, so someone looks at it and says, okay, it has been submitted. So now every post is being put put there. Now, as a normal user, you don't really need to understand that. I just really enjoy explaining this concept because it will pop up in lots of different places throughout your life. Now, the most common usage of blockchain is um, with currencies like Bitcoin. That's probably the most well-known usage of the technology of blockchain. What they do is they store information about, it's like a ledger. It's like he has sent this amount of money over to Bob and Bob has sent this amount of money. So all, it's just very small transactions, you know, with, with minimal amounts of data being, being uh, shared. So Steam is allowing larger, uh, usually larger amounts of data and it can be this large or I know that some of your earlier uh, posts had like one picture and a minimal amount of, of writing. Kind of like is if you were at Instagram and you posted a picture with a little bit of writing and you added a few tags. Is that correct? Yeah, well, that's how I first thought it was structured. So well, it wasn't until I looked at other people's posts that I saw you could have many photos and entire stories and yeah. videos even. So, Well, and I think... In, this is a personal opinion, not as much instructionary, but uh, long form com uh, long form content is making a comeback. Uh, mm -hmm. You see that in podcasts, you see that in uh, YouTube videos that the longer form stuff it, if it is quality, people don 't mind consuming it it 's a rejection, perhaps personal opinion of the popular or, or the recent culture of short Twitter bursts and short media things and very uh, superficial approach to many subjects. Now, they have a place um, uh, and they can be done here uh, where you add in information to Steam, the blockchain, or you can do things like this longer form where he is approaching a subject like Antarctica. And there's the kayak, there's the boat, there's the iceberg, there's a more uh, artistic image, there's the penguins, there's the up close of the ice and the people in the water. So he's telling a story with a longer form content. You really get a feel for what's going on there. Now that's not an explanation of how Steam Peak works, but it's a, an explanation perhaps of what's possible. You can add videos, you can add, uh, because you can add a YouTube link, you can add a link to Vimeo, you can, to different types of, of video sharing services, and then they will automatically play on a, on an interface like Steam Peak. So if Steam is a blockchain that holds data, what's unique about that is it's public and it's open. That is not the case with YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, they are not open interfaces. You have one, they're not open databases. You have one interface for each of those. There's only one way to look at the pictures really for Instagram. Now there may be little side applications that get permission from Instagram, but we don't have to talk about that. But um, in this case, there could be lots of interfaces to this database. So we at Steam Peak have created an interface and we have added lots of features. So our users say, hey, 
we would love to have, we've got this view that looks a lot like maybe like Pinterest. It's a, what we call grid mode, but we can click here and then we can get this, I guess, more Reddit style, uh, fast consumption, what we call list mode. And we have a third, which was the first mode that we made, which we, we call it blog mode. Um, it allows you to see the picture larger. It allows you to swipe or to hit these arrows. We've added a feature called slideshow. So um, now you can go to other websites and there will be other ways to interface. So my favorite, and we're gonna deep dive into what things do, but I love establishing the philosophy of why this exists and why this should make content creators and consumers excited. Because, and this is my favorite way to explain it, back in the MySpace days, <laughs> we, had a, we had a social media. It was a place where people could, there was a lot of users and there was a lot of content creators, but the content creator could decide they could make all these changes. And so from page to page, your experience was slightly different because they added these bright, shiny lights and things that <laughs> make you have like headaches. And it was kind of a aesthetic uh, mess, you know, because the user or the content creator was making all these crazy decisions. And so the consumer was coming in and every page was like, ah, but Facebook came in and said, we want to standardize the, the consumption for the, cre for the consumer. We want to standardize each page, each group, each feed, and, and make that standard. So, but what that took away was a lot of, well, the third impl implementation of a, like a social media type thing would be like this, where our going philosophy is that the consumer uh, should decide their preference. So if they want to use, which I know Paul goes in here and settings and uh, goes to interface and he changes it to night mode. Now this is a decision that as a consumer, he gets to decide. So he is not deciding that for, for everyone else, you know, for his page. He just gets to, now I can go in and look at everything and I'll be in night mode. Or I can choose to see something in, in this mode. So we are basically giving back power to the, the end consumer, you know? So, uh, that's that's a unique thing and the other unique thing that you should keep in mind uh not necessarily how steam works per se but connections is very unique because when you go in here this is the last person i followed which is paul and i go into uh, follow or unfollow i am making a direct connection that's very that actually is very unique because really the only other place you have that is in like an email list in facebook you're not making a direct connection in instagram on youtube on patreon they are not direct connections they are through connections you are following paul through instagram you are following paul through youtube through patreon and at any point if they don't like what Paul does, they can remove him and all of his connections, he's made 47 that he fall or that follow him and 18 that he follows. Um, so those 18 that he follows uh, would be, cannot be, ever be severed. They can never be removed. Now those are some of the cool things, you know, like, and, and that happens with YouTube and Patreon. They just decide, or a computer decides, you're out. You're gone. You can't make money on YouTube. You can't post on YouTube. We don't like what you said. 
So there's this censorship aspect, something like that. So even if Steam Peak, the company someday doesn't like you, it doesn't matter because there are other interfaces to the database. So everything that Paul does here uh, will show up on a site like at Paul MG. MP. MP. So you can see the stuff over there. So it doesn't matter what we think. So anyways, that's kind of a pre-introduction. Now we are going to go to um, talk about the different pages. But first, I think the other thing, um, uh, well, we will get to a section about how people can actually, they, they can actually, each time that they hit this little heart button, it actually results in an economic impact on Paul. Um, and we're gonna say how that's done and, 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 and why that works and uh, potential implications for how that could be beneficial to content creators in, in several different ways. But I want to review first, uh, should we stay in night mode? I think because the default uh, is not night mode, I'm gonna go back um, uh, to non-night mode. So now we're gonna go back to Paul's page. Uh, we are in the blog sort of mode. We are on basically what we would call Paul's blog, if you want to, his feed of pictures. So all the posts that he has created. And I wanna kind of run through the page real quick. Um, so feed, if I click on this, I'm gonna see all of the people that I follow. Now we are in my default preference, which is this grid mode. Um, uh, we're gonna go back to Paul's page. If I click on profile, it will take me to my page, okay? If I go to explore, it's just other ways that Steam Peak has created to help you find maybe new content or um, lists. So here feeds is lists of people. So you can follow people and, and that is a public thing. So everyone can see that. And, or you can make lists uh, on Steam Peak, which is private. Um, so I can just see like, okay, let's go find all those uh, legit photographers. So this is my, what I call legit photographers. It's a feed of all the posts from uh, photographers that I think some of my favorites that I've added to the list so far. So Paul's in there and uh, I've got a few other uh, friends and people I know and obviously some great photography. At any point I could change uh, the view. Um, actually, let's go to this. Uh, I like this. So mode. question there. Yes. Can you share that list or feed with other users? So if I wanted to follow your photography. Um, this is present. So this is a, a good example because um, that is a feature <laughs> uh, that we are going to do. <laughs> cool. Um, but lots of features to work on. So we do enjoy when people make requests um, because that kind of, oh, that's a new fun idea. Or, mm -hmm. um, or that's vindication for an idea that we want to do. So, sure. um, uh, but that can help people to find content and people to follow much quicker. And I understand the need. Uh, right now, I could probably just share that list with you personally. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna keep on going. We're gonna skip tribes for a moment. Um, it's kind of like communities of people with similar interests. 
Um, but there's some unique and fun things that are involved with it. So um, like Steam Ace is people with an interest of gaming. Steam Leo is an interest of people uh, that have interest in economic type stuff. Um, but it's, it's, it's new and uh, adding information to it is something on our list because how would you know that Steam Leo is economics? You don't, so uh, we will add that soon. Over here on the, on the crayon or pencil is basically some choice to create content. So Paul's already found that, uh, the ability to write a post, so you can write a, a title here. And then this, this is stuff I want to share. And then you can um, drag and drop or, uh, and what it does is it's uploading for you to a website, onto our website, and then adding in the link. Because as I explained before, blockchain is just letters and numbers, right? So, but we have a feature where we're adding, if you need, if you already have them somewhere on your, on another website, you can just share the link here. But if you want to upload them to the website, then you can just drag and drop. And then all of this just represents, it points to the picture. So that's different than, than normal. And I know that's going to throw it's gonna be different for a few people to see this long link. This is all kind of a link. And this here allows you to write information about the picture. So um, if there is this ability, if you want to, um, we're gonna leave this and go back to create posts. If you're more comfortable with kind of an HTML editor, you can click on that. The default language, of the Steam blockchain is what's called Markdown. So if you ever heard that word, uh, Markdown. So if you go, sorry, let me go back. If you're here, you can't drag and drop. You have to upload an image and uh, it'll still have the same <laughs> layout. So you have to be kind of, uh, wait for it to upload which probably isn't the best thing to upload files while I'm doing a uh, screen <laughs> share, but apparently my internet may be good enough for that. But, so there you go. Uh, posts, you can add tags, which is, I guess, like keywords you may be familiar with, like on Instagram, uh, we allow 10 tags. Um, so uh, the first tag you cannot change. I'm gonna say photography, I'm gonna spell it correctly. Um, I'm gonna say landscape, I'm gonna say Utah, uh, clouds, I don't know. Um, I can add it to certain different types of those tribe communities. Here's one I like, Palnet, um, yeah. It's obviously not going to be good for the economic one or the, the gaming one, of course. <laughs> and uh, Steam Peak has added some abilities, uh, some advanced abilities. So now that's all you really need. Well, you need a title, picture. Um, and it should be a better title than that. And you should have some wording because this is low, low energy, just to write a just to post a picture and that's it. That's very low energy. You're probably not going to get a lot of hearts or, or what we call upvotes. Um, so that's similar, you know, you get likes on Facebook, uh, hearts on YouTube, you have upvotes on Reddit. Uh, well, we have upvotes on, on Steam, which we represent with a heart because people understand hearts, so. There we go. So that's very low value. Um, you could write about this. You could tell a story. You could add a few more pictures. You could add a better title um, and all that sort of stuff. But this is all that's really required. And then you can publish this and then it goes to your profile. However, you can also get 
a little crazier and um, add a short description. You could also um, change the permalink, which is kind of like, well, let's go here to profile. And if I click on my recent post, um, you can see here that my permalink, I called it Nebo Views. Nebo is the location. And I just said views. So the whole URL is kind of like Steam Peak. It's the category, it's your username, and then it's the permalink. So there you go. I don't know that all that stuff you don't really need to know, but if you wanted to go into advanced, if you wanted to, you didn't, you don't have to. My suggestion though is the only real thing in, in, in advanced to, to do each time that we suggest to do each time is the short description. You don't need to do any of those other things. So, but if I create, I started to create a post and one unique thing is that we on Steam Peak automatically save it for you. So now if I go to view drafts, I never hit a save button, but it was automatically saving it for me. So I can go and delete it or I can continue to go back and edit the post. Um, uh, now drafts, if you have a certain setup, you always want to end your post with links to other places, or you always want to end your post um, by sharing a deep spiritual thought. I don't know what you want to do. Or, um, <laughs> or a plea to donate to the Red Cross. Who knows? You can um, save a particular type of post as a template. So you go to here and save it as a template. Or if you have, uh, I'm very thankful for everyone that comes and clicks or and views my posts. Now that's something you always say because that's just so you, it's so Paul, you know, he <laughs> always says that. And he always wants it to, um, I'm going to highlight it and I'm gonna make it bold. And so then it adds the characters that makes it bold. But I'm also gonna make it italics. And then um, I'm gonna make it really large. <laughs> bold, italics, and large, because you're crazy like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, but I don't wanna to have to do this, write this every time I do a post on Steam Peak, we allow what's called a snippet. So you can come in here and save it thankful for everyone and then i'm going to paste whoops i'm going to copy this first and then i'm going to paste it in paste it in here and save it i don't know why i've saved that because i don't think there's a delete for that and that sucks <laughs> oh there is a delete okay cool <laughs> So each time I'm writing a post and I come into a brand new post and I'm like, oh, I got to have my, my tagline in here. So I go here and hit copy and then I hit paste over here. And that just saves you all sorts of fun times. So the reason these are just fun little, I guess, little Easter egg type features that we have on Steam Peak. But it also demonstrates that Steam Peak is the type of company that says, Oh, you want a faster way to do something? You want a way to, um, you know, like do that cool thing that you always wanted to do, or, you know, like save a draft. And, uh, you want to schedule posts? Okay, we'll let you schedule a post. So um, you would have to use a sign in system called Steam Connect, and then you could schedule a post. Now, what, what does that mean? Let's back up a step because we're already logged in, but uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna log out for a second. Here's the front page of Steam Peak. Um, uh, we are showing some popular posts as decided by certain, certain curators. So people that vote, they've, some of these people have spent a lot of time looking for the best content given a certain subject. So 
these people have gone in and tried to find the best science related content and they have voted it and they have done this for a long time and they've been consistent with it and they've shown that they're really good at finding science content so on the front page of steam peak we have added them uh we have basically sh we're showing a history of all of the votes that this account has made because they have done such a vigilant job we call these people well anytime you vote on something you are curating like you're a museum curator saying here are all the pictures and for this presentation all this beautiful artwork showing off the impression era you know you could essentially do exactly that be a curator of impressionist art now you're not going to find a ton on steam per se you find some um, but you could be a, that type of curator you could be a curator for great photography so we go into here and find great photography and this curator called photo feed will go in and find um, what they do is find uh, two or three their favorites um, they are taking a week off since you can see here their last one was eight days ago so so there we go but we were I, I just wanted to kind of show off the front page the, the one of the things you can do is sign up for an account so um, steam ninja is the name of a company or service from a company and they're charging two dollars and fifty us um, to create an account and they do a couple other things for you um, uh, steam monsters is a game or I think maybe what Paul did is you probably use that company steam it uh, yes, they do. created an account for you but for free but it was a very long wait time I'm guessing because there's because it was free everyone was waiting in a long line to get it so I don't know how long their wait times are and uh, there are other methods uh, to getting an account um, you know, if you know someone on Steam, maybe they'll make an account for you. <laughs> um, uh, there we go. So, um, and part of that is, is there's no, there's now a fly in my room. So this is, I am not good at <laughs> this distraction. I warn everyone and I'm sorry for that in advance. But uh, because there is no s central company that owns the Steam blockchain, now Steam it, helped create a lot of the software for the blockchain, but no one owns the blockchain, but it still has lots of server costs. And so that's part of the reason why this wouldn't be free. There's still costs associated with this, and there's still people that run computers to help run this uh, system. And so they have to be paid and they're, and what's really fun, this is geeky, but it's fun is that they're located all around the world and are not beholden to a particular company. They're not beholden to a particular government. So it is not, so that helps with the lack of censorship, the lack, the, the more decentralization, I guess you could say which is part of the perks of blockchain in general, but in particular this blockchain. So that's kind of fun. The geeky aside, you don't need to know that. Let's continue. Uh, Paul already has an account. I already have an account. There are presently two ways to log in to Steam Peak. One is using Steam Keychain and one is using Steam Connect. Paul has had an experience with both of those. I think he has said that the experience is multiples better <laughs> with keychain uh very much so um it just kept crashing and giving me errors on <laughs> on the other options so <laughs> i haven't had any errors since changing over what we don't like to do on steam peak is to have any access to your um what we call keys. So a lot of places call these passwords, okay? 
Um, so a password would be like, Scott Jarvey is, well, you don't usually, is so cool. And I think that's probably a lot of people's password, obviously. Uh, and then you have to put like, <laughs> you can't just do that because you have to have something capitalized, right? So, so. Exclamation mark at the end too. Yeah, an exclamation mark at the end <laughs> with a with a number, and you know they try to make it uh, less hackable by making you do these fun little things. Well, uh, examples of keys they you cannot choose a key; they are given to you. Just like you know, when you get a lock, they give you a key. You don't choose the key because it fits perfectly so you are given a key and these keys are unhackable they are just crazy and long and you need to um, copy paste them because you can never quite oh I almost got it um, uh, they're never I mean there's like capital letters and lowercase and they're long and so you just need to copy paste them somewhere a lot of people use something like LastPass or a or I don't know what you do, a, a notepad on your computer, as long as no one else is accessing your computer um, or wherever you put highly sensitive passwords, I guess. Um, uh, but with Steam Connect, you would add that. Uh, with Keychain, um, that is basically um, just a program uh, where you can add accounts. So I would add in uh, a new account like uh, Paul MP2. <laughs> and then I would type in that long, or I, I wouldn't type it in, I would copy paste it there and then I would import the key. It's not going to work because obviously this key does not match the lock. Paul MP2 doesn't even exist, so there we go. In any case, what it would do is would give me a list of a lot of accounts. I run an account called Peak Monsters, and um, so now if I want to, with Keychain, that is a browser extension to Chrome, Brave, and Firefox. Sorry, Safari and mobile users. Um, with a desktop extension, I should just say. You will need to use this third party system called Steam Connect. But if you're using others, all you have to do then is type in the account Peak Monsters and it logs you in. And then one of the fun things about Steam Peak is that you can switch accounts. So here's some of the other accounts that I have the authority to write on. Um, funny enough, Jarvi is, you know, my main account isn't there because I just logged out of it. So it thinks, oh, you don't want this one anymore. So now I can switch back and forth between accounts literally as fast as I can click on them. Um, So there we go. That's, that's a fun little uh, thing. I am assuming new users probably only have one account and probably only will have one account for the majority of you. <laughs> but if you happen to have, if you like this power user, you can, uh, you can switch accounts very fast. So um, we're going to switch back to my Jarvi account. And um, uh, we're going to go back to that front page and we're going to describe a couple other things. So I can see any recent activities on my account. So this user has replied um, on a comment. Okay, that's useful list and should be more public. Okay, cool. You know, what was he actually talking about? Well, this is uh, this is something that I commented. I actually shared a list of all the users, all the lit, all the main accounts for that company, Steam It, in case people wanted it. And he's like, oh, this is really useful. Um, I was like, yeah, that's why I shared it. <laughs> um, my sister uh, replied to a post that I did. Um, 
I have actually, in my settings, all I'm getting notifications for is replies. I don't want notifications when someone votes. I don't want notifications when money is transferred to me. I don't I want notifications to change that. <laughs> uh, when I get a reward from a post or from a comment, as we will discuss here in a moment. It's the economic aspect of Steam. Uh, so I only want personally, and so this is part of the like, as an end consumer, I get to decide my experience. So we create defaults, but we allow you to change something. So go through, that's located here on the settings, or if you're over here, you can go directly to the notification settings by hitting the gear. Um, and then um, over here is a few other things. So uh, I'll go through them quickly. Uh, but we'll probably touch on some of these later. So we've got replies, which is all those that have replied to me. So that's a fun place to go to see where uh, if I need to, if I'm like got someone that's asked me a question or has said something and I want to say thank you. And here's all the activities on that I have done or that have been done for me, like people that have voted on my stuff. So this person has voted on on this comment uh this person has voted on this comment um this person has replied i have voted on paul's comment so this activities which is located here and here should be considered advanced you do not need to know about activities but because everything is so transparent that's another word to know for, for blockchain. Another thing to know specifically for the Steam blockchain is that everything is transparent. You can see who Paul follows. You can see the activities he's done. You can see the things he's voted on, the comments he's made, and the posts he's done, um, unless he decides to encrypt them. Now, Steam Peak doesn't have an encryption method. That will eventually come, so you can make private posts that are just for your friends. Um, but everything right now is very public, very, um, and even those posts will be transparent. They'll just be transparently encrypted with crazy letters and numbers and things you can't understand. That was an aside. You don't need to know that. I'm just happy to be excited about the future potential for that. So, um, and, and at the moment, you can't picture this necessarily as a replacement for Facebook. This isn't you interactingly interacting privately with your friends this isn't you posting something that only you only want your friends to see this is kind of content creators that want to create public content and and whoever wants to come in and consume it can um, you have to wait for for encryption for it to take the place of something like an instagram or a facebook you know where they allow you to decide you get to be a, de a gatekeeper to your content. Um, so, okay, so you can also filter this content. Again, this is advanced. We're doing an orientation video that is beyond orientation, of course. Wallet, we're gonna talk about for a little while. So we're gonna quickly, and we've already kind of alluded to a bit of what setting does that allows you to make the experience what you want to make it as a consumer. Um, some other advanced things are witnesses and proposals. In fact, I think that may, we should probably put like ADV next to it, like advanced, 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 you know, <laughs> like, or make it a simple uh, menu. And, and then you're like, oh, I want to see the advanced options, you know, that sort of thing. So, but I'm telling you right now, activities, um, uh, witnesses, proposals, um, and a dec decent amount of tools are all advanced. So you got uh, fun things where you can see analytics of your page. But if you're a new user, you don't care. Um, you can see your bookmarks here. Here's some of my bookmarks. Um, I can see my lists here, all the lists that I have created. Um, 
And then uh, here's a fun one that I want to talk a little bit more about is services. So if you are logged in, or even if you're not logged in, I think you can get here by going to steampeak.com slash services, and you will get a link to where to download Keychain. You can also download an application for Steam Connect. Um, and here are some of the other services, meaning third-party companies that we have integrated some of the stuff that they do directly into here. You saw a mention of Steam Ninja as like a service to create an account. They'll take your credit card and charge you $2.50 and you'll have an account and it'll be simple that way. Not free, but simple. So here's some of the other services, um, which I want to just point out mainly, here's the download link to Steam Keychain, because if you're on a computer, this is the main place to go to first. So we've got services and then advanced things like witnesses, proposals, um, GSMI market, all those should be considered advanced. Um, I'm realizing now that we should mark them as advanced. So that gives you the, as a new user, that gives you an excuse to say, I don't need to know these things. <laughs> Not yet, at least. So, but back we go. We're going to go back to profile and we're going to finally talk about these things that are underneath. We have the heart button, um, which if you hover over it and it says 111, it means that 111 people have given me a vote. Notice, I was careful with my wording. I didn't say 111 people clicked on this button. 111 people have given me a vote um, because some of these are automated. So that's an interesting thing about this. So if I want to, and I, I suppose I probably will at some point is, as on Paul's post, I am his friend, I want to support him, he does great things, um, I am probably going to give him an automatic vote um, every time he posts. So after five minutes, it will just automatically give him a vote. That is advanced. <laughs> but I just want people to know um, that that's why some of these numbers can look like 390. That does not mean 390 people have viewed my post. Um, in fact, what happens is something like a substantial um, curator, and this one is called Curie, has given me a vote. And so they have been around for a while. They are known for finding the best content and voting it, and they have t many people that work in this system working hard to find the best content on Steam. And so when they give a vote, a lot of other people give automatic votes because they say, if Curie thinks it's worth a vote, we believe Curie. And so they give a small vote as well. So I, I mean, so that's just something I wanted to point out. now. Uh, comments. So we're going to open up, uh, we're going to click on this and it'll just kind of pop up, you know. Also, when I clicked on um, this, it just went directly to it. It was more than just a pop up. So I want to just show you have a couple different things. But I'm going to go back to the pop up of this page. Um, I have five comments and one reblog. This curator, another curator, um, has has shared my post because they thought it was great, right? So, and then I have received 390 votes um, and five accounts have commented. A couple of them, like this is my sister and a couple other people to make very personable comments. And then there was the person that shared it just said, hey, I shared it and this is where I shared it and this is why I shared it. And this other one is like, hey, I'm giving you a, I give you an automatic vote every time you post. So these comments may not be what you're used to on Facebook. I just wanna, wanna share that. If you're a new user and it's your first post, you may get a lot of people like, hey, welcome to Steam. 
I know that Paul got that. I've seen his post. They're like, hey, welcome to Steam. Here, we noticed you're new and here's some information because they've been able to look and see, oh, you're new. And I'm going to I'm going to give all you new users a certain post. So that is an experience that you should be familiar with. Now, there's way to um, now here's the big one. And I know Paul had some definite questions about this right here, right, Paul? Yes. So. So my question is, so I had a post get 1,403 votes recently. Um, Canal Rocks photo uh, posted two days yep. ago. So he had 1,403. Notice Curie gave it an 81%. They were deaf. Uh, so just pay attention to that first thing here. 81% of a full vote of a full heart was given to Paul. And that's a big deal. And so a lot of people said, I, I believe this. Um, I, if, he, if they give him a large vote, we're going to give him a large vote. So that's what happened there. Um, mm -hmm. But what you're seeing here is that, um, that this one only had 238 votes, but this number over here is larger than the one that had 1,403. Nearly three times as much. Yeah. Okay, so now we do, I mean, this is something that confused me for many, many months about Steam when I first started. And now I can explain it in basically two minutes. So I think it's perfectly understandable ap after, I don't know, two to three minutes. So I'm mm -hmm. saving you months of time in these <laughs> two to three minutes, but I'll try to be careful in the way that I explain it. Steam. If we go way back, I said, is the name of a blockchain. It is also a name of a currency. So mm -hmm. every day, more steam is being created, inflated. Now, every currency in the world prints money, I guess you could say. The US dollar, you're in Australia, the Australian dollar, your government prints money and then has decisions on where that money should go. U.S. it's to pay off the interest on our debt or to fund warlords to keep the peace in Afghanistan. <laughs> they literally will print money, put it in an airplane, fly it to Afghanistan, and pay off a warlord to keep the peace. <laughs> That's where money goes. <laughs> you know, you, and it's really, it's not transparent. Steam is very transparent. Each day, an, a knowable amount of steam is created. We know exactly how much that is on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and a portion of that goes to those that are running the servers, the computers, to help keep Steam running. A portion goes to help fund projects that make Steam better. And these are small portions. The vast majority of Steam is created and put into a pool, which we call a rewards pool. What are we rewarding? We are rewarding posts. We are rewarding comments. We are rewarding Paul. We are rewarding Paul um, with quite a lot <laughs> on his last post. So um, there was a big reward. Now, as you can see, it is not connected directly to the number of accounts that are giving it a vote. It is connected to those that have a larger stake a larger investment into Steam. It is those that have not just owned Steam, but have set it aside, what we call powered it up. They have set aside the Steam and it's now converted into something called Steam Power because everything has the word Steam in it. So Steam Power relates to the value of your vote. So Paul's vote value, because he is very new, is at the very top here, it says his vote value is 0 0.002. He had just started. He actually bought, I don't know, what was it like? Five, 10, what is it? $10 of steam, maybe? Uh, it was about $25 worth Australian. So about 
yeah, fifteen dollars American probably. Here's something that may seem <laughs> may, a little jarring at first because everything on the blockchain is transparent because you cannot hack it, you cannot uh, manipulate it. Is that his wallet is open? So the hundred and eighteen Steam, he took all hundred and eighteen and he powered up into steam power and that made his his vote go from basically zero um so someone with zero could still hit the heart button and it would still be just as valuable as it is on instagram and facebook it's a <laughs> thank you it's a good job it's a thumbs up um <laughs> now he's made his vote a thumbs up plus an economic impact each time he makes a vote on someone else so um there you go so i can go to my feed um, meaning the people that i publicly follow i have lists of people that i privately follow as well um and i can go in and here's someone i know who also has a great picture i can look at the full post i can decide to read it a lot or i'm doing a video and i don't have time to read it all and I can click on this heart button and I can give a full vote, a small vote. I can even give a 1% vote. So my 1% is worth 0 0.001. So my, uh, my 2% is worth 0 0.003 um, because I have earned a lot of steam and then converted it to steam power. I have bought some steam, basically invested into this currency and then added it to steam power. You can look, anyone can look at my wallet. There's a lot of things going in here. I wanna just point you to these first two items right here. Um, I have 550 tokens, steam tokens, that, that currency. And then I have converted 8,619 of them into steam power um so there you go now you can convert the other way um uh, but that takes so you can immediately convert from steam to steam power um but it takes uh 13 installments to move from steam power back to steam that's just a an aside um that sort of thing so now the votes that have been given to me now this is something fun here on the wallet we're starting to enter the realm of the wallet, of course. We've talked about uh, these tokens that you can earn from making posts and having people with large votes. Now you may not care about these votes, but the wallet section is for those that care. The other people can just continue to look at Steam Peak as like an Instagram or a, or a Facebook where the heart is just like, good job you know, and, and you don't have to care about the economic aspect of steam. You do not have to care about, care about it. it. And in fact, it's not going to make anyone rich. And that was, that's something I, I, that's maybe a personal opinion. I feel like it's a important opinion though. Steam will not make you rich. Steam Peak will not make you rich. But it is also nice that Paul made like, 20 something dollars by doing his post because I'm sure Instagram and Facebook have never given him $20 for making a post. Not I'm directly. <laughs> YouTube will give you money if you have a large audience and you have, and you get tens of thousands of views. Uh, that's a lot of work, of course. Um, okay. So back to that. I just want to recap the economic structure of steam. Uh, they call this uh, the rewards pool. Money is being put there and based on where all the votes go. Um, so let's say on a daily basis, there's 60,000 steam being distributed. Um, uh, that is going to thousands and thousands and thousands of users. I'll hear a little bit. A lot of users are getting like five, 10 cents one cent two cent the majority get, are getting under one dollars worth of steam the vast majority so to get something that's getting 
forty dollars worth is is a big deal. So there's there's very <laughs> few that get that many. So um, of the sixty thousand that are being distributed, perhaps on a daily basis. Boom, 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 boom. There you are. Now, um, sometimes uh, when you make a post, some of it, they, they call it liquid, liquid money. That's, that's a confusing term to a new person, I suppose. But liquid is something that is immediately available to you, okay? Steam is immediately available. You can take this steam to an exchange and exchange it for Bitcoin. And then Bitcoin, you can exchange for dollars. Um, so basically, the steam has a US dollar value. Uh, the steam power does as well, but it's not liquid because you have to power down and wait for it to become steam. Because um, uh, that is the price of being able to have a vote is, is you, you basically say, I am willing to commit the steam to be locked up for a period of time. In exchange, I will have a vote in the system. That is what you're saying. Also, you get to do more transactions on Steam, make more posts, make more comments, uh, vote more often because, and that is determined by how much Steam power you have. Because it's saying, I am invested into this system that no one owns, no Facebook corporation is paying the million dollar bill to run this on a yearly basis. So therefore, I am saying I'm willing to invest into this system or earn rewards and power them up. And therefore, I get to make more comments. And it's also a way of avoiding any spam into the system. So um, uh, tokens are given out on a daily basis. You make cr great posts. You capture the interest of people. Uh, you make connections with people. You are friendly with them. You have a friend there that has a good vote. Um, uh, so my votes, basically, I like to look at the, la the, the three numbers there. So it's worth 146 compared to a new person that's worth maybe, maybe one, you know. So, and that will go up and down based on the value of steam to the US dollar, to be honest. So that is a little variable. So that's not always going to be case be the case that your vote is worth 0 0.002, Paul. At some <laughs> point, if Steam uh, becomes more valuable, it may be worth, it, it may show up as being worth 0 0.1, you know, or, yep. or, you know, like, or, you know, something to that effect. I've gotten a lot of posts. I've done some posts recently, and there is a voting period, and that is seven days. So people have seven days on which to vote my post. So seven days ago, I wrote this post. We'll look at it. It wasn't super long. It was a, in fact, it was a draft, it was a template. So everything here was the same except for the lyrics and the picture and, and maybe a short description, but all this stuff here was part of my template. It was a very quick post. I posted it. It was obviously, it still had value. It's a beautiful picture and I connected lyrics to the picture, and it's been seven days, and uh, it says 335. 335 what? Well, it's this kind of comparative number. You don't really know what it means. They try to equate it to the US dollar, but don't count on that. So it's just comparative. It's, it's, it's like saying I got 335 of something. If you want to know what it actually equates to, you go to your wallet after seven days and this is what it equates to they're giving me five steam power and four um steam and there may be some other things i did in that time so that may be exact it's probably four and four to be honest so it's like eight steam basically i got four liquid and four non-liquid and so i'm going to claim those rewards which is it's like that's weird, why don't they just automatically give it to me? But they make you claim it, because why not, I guess. <laughs> there you go, so after seven days, you don't have a post that's been seven days old. There's a seven day voting period. Um, 
after seven days, you're gonna start see those coming in and you just claim them and they will go into your wallet. So four went here into my tokens, four went into my Steam Power. And every once in a while, um, they will give you this thing called Steam Backed Dollars. But um, that's just based on the inner workings and the code of a hard to understand blockchain. And you don't, you can't predict, we don't know exactly when that's going to be. Um, but you can convert your Steam dollars into Steam pretty easily. So there you go. Now, if we want to really finish and go into a little bit more interesting, maybe more advanced and perhaps exciting field is that Steam is the name of a token. It is the main token of the Steam blockchain. However, there was a third party that says, let's create a bunch of allow people to create tokens. So the name of this company is Steam Engine. So they call them Steam Engine tokens. So anyone can create a token. I created a token. It cost me like 100 Steam and I created a token and we gave it a name for one of our businesses that we have. And this business is, is basically an entry. We, 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 we counted it like a ticket to a, to a game. If you had one of these tokens, you got an entry into a game. You do whatever you want with a token. You can, you can tell people uh, this Paul token. If you have a Paul token, you can buy one of my images. I don't know. Or you get a photo <laughs> shoot from Paul because if you have one token and, and you're like, whoa, I want one of these tokens. You're like, yeah, it's $500 for one of these tokens because my photo shoots are worth $500. I should do that. I should create a Jarvi token and it costs $500. <laughs> And you need one token to purchase a photo shoot, a normal photo shoot. And you need six of them to get a wedding. And you need, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> whatever you wanted. Here's the fun thing. Remember tribes? Now, if the concept is that a, that a token can create new tokens each day and distribute to users that create content, then why can't a small community that are, that are sub, a sub community create tokens based on that sub theme? So if you go into here and we talked about, I don't know, some of these are interesting. STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. They're gonna allow you to, to write, to add posts by adding a keyword. Just add a keyword to your post I think it's S-T-E-M. I think that's all you have to do is add that keyword. Maybe, I'm not sure. Um, you add that keyword to your posts and then it goes into this community and then they're all earning STEM tokens. See how they've earned, this person's earned 190 STEM tokens, 208 STEM tokens, 57, because it's the same thing as the Steam. Steam is very general, it's for everyone. No matter what post you do, you're going to earn Steam or Steam Power. But if you have a certain type of post and add it to a tribe, you can earn these other tokens. Now a token doesn't have any value until someone is willing to pay for it. And why would they want one? There'd have to be utility. We want US dollars or Australian dollars in your case, because you can do things with those dollars. You can buy food, you can pay your rent, you can do those sorts of things with Australian dollars in your country, okay? <laughs> you, you can't buy food or pay for rent with Australian dollars in my country. Um, so it's, 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 it's like, using STEM tokens to pay for rent. You can't do that. <laughs> Just like I can't pay for rent with Australian dollars. So, but there should be each of these token owners have the objective, hopefully, to create a sense of utility for their tokens. Now the main utility um, that is kind of just default in the concept of Steam is that it, that the tokens can determine the order of, so you can go here to most rewarded. 
and I can see the most rewarded post. So it's a way of an algorithm of sorts of determining which post may be the most interested to this community. All these people that are invested and that have STEM, S-T-E-M tokens, science, tech, engineering, and math tokens, um, they've decided which of these posts are the most interested, interesting. So this one has 159 after 10 hours. This one has an 80, 145 after 15 hours, you know? So you can see they're very sciencey type stuff. But you can also just see the newest posts. You see this one has been promoted. How did they promote it? Because there's a utility of the token. They have actually spent STEM tokens to promote their posts so that you could see the post. So there's a second utility, ordering posts, promoting posts. Maybe someone out there says, I will answer your question if you give me five STEM tokens. I don't know. It, I'm sure there's no one out there doing that right now, but they could. Um, so uh, the, try, the better the, the token is, the, the more utility a token has, the more it's going to be worth, in my opinion. But you also have to count how much um, supply there is. You have supply and demand. So now, if you desire, now you could just do these posts, bring people, you just love the way it's laid out, you can forget all of the economics, never care about the economics at all, ever, use Steam Peak, not care about the economics, we don't mind. But a lot of people come in here because it's interesting for the economics. You get a free economics lesson in life and, and see how things interact and, and stuff like that. So it's kind of fun. But if, and you're never going to make, I said this earlier, you're not going to become rich off of this. Paul is not going to retire off the, the one time $20 value <laughs> post he got. Okay. Um, I mean, even if he did that every day, it's, he can't expect to get that. I mean, he maybe get $2 votes every day, I guess. I don't know. He's still not going to make a living off of that. Maybe if you're in a third world country and your expenses are very, very low, you could make a living. But let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, I don't want anyone to, to, to stake like, oh, I'm going to become rich like that, you know? There would need to be other traditional sources like ads. There would need to be you know, you need to convert that into sponsorship opportunities, that sort of thing. That's how content creators make significant money. They, they use it to get sponsorships. They use it to bring in ad revenue. They use it to promote something else. They're selling photo shoots. They're selling pictures. They're selling wire. I don't know. But to a content creator, this is exciting. To the YouTubers I know, this is a very interesting proposition. You can get a bunch of, now if we're just talking Steam, you can get a bunch of Steam, have a large vote. So you as a content creator may be more interested in buying Steam than earning Steam. Because what you as a typical content creator are more interested in is in the value of your connection. How many connection? and how strong those connections are, meaning the influence. We call these influencers, right? You influence people, influence them to buy something. To, to Paul teaches photography. He, he travels around uh, the world with different workshop companies and will teach photography and people will pay to do this. And so he can, um, so his ability to connect with photographers maybe to influence them is better. So the larger his vote is, maybe more beneficial to him than just earning votes because then he can translate it into the thing that gives him hundreds and hundreds of dollars or maybe a thousand dollars every time signs up, someone signs up for a workshop through Paul. And he can do that by going, hey, he can even give challenges like share a post about uh, the, uh, you know, past workshop goers, share a post from your workshop, 
share a testimonial and I will give you a large vote. People will go, oh, yeah, okay, cool, I'll give you a, it's, it's very interesting, this gamification and this motivation through a, a upvote, a heart, this little thumbs up that has so much more impact and meaning. It has an economic impact in their life and people will do things. I will write a post um, talking about something and they're like, hey, if you, if you write a post about such and such thing, we'll give you a vote. And I'm like, okay, sounds cool. But I still turn down sponsorships for hundreds of dollars because I'm like, ah, I don't, you know, I don't want to do that, you know. <laughs> but I'm like, I'll do this for a vote, you know, because it's fun. It's this game. It's this connection. It's this thing I'm not being forced to do. I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. I'll comment. And so, you know, everyone that comes in um, to my post, I will come in here and give a vote. And, and based on the value of what they said, maybe I give a larger vote. And so therefore, when you come back into my post, it's now organized by default. Well, let's give it a moment. <laughs> if, you were, if you were to refresh the page, it would be organized based on how large my vote was. So I guess I didn't do this last vote. Okay, now we go back and now this was a larger vote. See 0 0.04, 0 0.03, 0 0.02. I can, I can reward someone every time they interact with me. Now I go to Facebook or Instagram and I'm like, oh, thank you for commenting. And I click a little heart and I'm like, that felt a little empty. All I did was part. There was no economic impact in their life. Even though it was small, it was still, and there was no ability for me to kind of organize based on the author's vote. <laughs> so some fun, fun things that you can do. So I think we described most everything um, that a, a new user probably needs to know about Steam, and we did it in, I don't know, it was probably close to an hour, I'm guessing, but it was worth it. I saved you many, many months of your life if you have watched this <laughs> video um, through this orientation video. One would hope. Now we're going to allow um, Paul to ask a couple questions, but any kind of like unique questions we'll probably just answer them off in another video perhaps actually let's is there anything in like a generic user um orientation that you would like to ask otherwise we'll we'll retain most of the questions for another video i i did see that like we have account details that you can add you can go into actions and you can edit profile now if mm -hmm. i'm on um paul's I gotta go back. I was go right here. Paul P. No M P. No. Yep. Um, if I go to his actions, I can send him tokens. I can delegate token Steam power to him, meaning it will remain in my wallet. He doesn't actually get the money, but he gets um, the impact of my Steam power. So he can vote with it. He can have transactions with it. I, I sent him some when he didn't have any. So I probably, I can move that back down. Yep. <laughs> and uh, uh, I want to, this is important and I feel bad if, for those that haven't watched all the way through because I realized we started talking about logging in with Keychain, but I realized that I need to talk a little bit more about the keys because there are different keys. So. One key allows you to do economic things like send money or delegate to Paul, or it's the same key that allows you to edit your profile or make a vote on what's called the witnesses or proposals. Uh, that key is called the active key. So it is a certain key that fits a certain lock. And with that, you get to do certain things, economic things. Now, the interesting thing about that is you want to keep that key 
safer than what is called the posting key. The posting key does probably what you would suspect the name. It allows you to make posts. It also allows you to vote. Those are things that don't really impact you economically, so it's a different key. So you could give that key to someone else. So Paul, if he doesn't want to do all of his posts and he's such a big deal, he has a <laughs> intern, he would not give them the active key because then the intern would have access to Paul's actual money, his bank account. His bank account where there's no actual teller you know, to check an ID. It's just, if you have the key, you have access to that money. So keep the active key very safe. And the posting key, I mean, I have accounts where I, can, I give my posting key to people because it's like, what, are they gonna make a post for me and earn me money? Oh no, you know? <laughs> or they're gonna write something racist, I guess, is the worst thing that could happen. And I'm like, that wasn't me, that was this other user. So you still wanna be careful because they could still, damage your reputation, I guess. Um, but it's your friend or your mom or your intern, your employee, so you trust them. You give them a posting key. So you got posting, active, and then you have the mother of all keys, the master key, the owner key. This is the key that you never actually want to use because its only use case should be to reset your other passwords. If your other passwords get compromised, stolen they can't be hacked as we've talked about they're too long they're too cryptographic they can't be hacked but if they get stolen if you miss have a mistake if you are doing a screen share and someone sees it you don't want them to see your owner key but you, you if they see your posting key it's like ah, okay not a big deal if they see your active key you go in with your owner key and you reset the other keys that's the owner key's ability. Owner, active, posting. So um, on Keychain, it will allow you to store the posting in the active and another one called memo, which doesn't really, there's, there's no use case that a new user should even concern themselves with. Um, so the active and the posting are what's going to be there. And so when you're on Steam Peak and you make a post, it's going to, check Steam Peak and, and, and sign that transaction, but your key never actually goes onto the internet. That's what Keychain does. And it's this, it's this unique concept. You put a password into the internet and, and things, bad things can happen. If you use Keychain, it just tells Steam Peak or tells the blockchain and says, I have proved that I have authority to make this transaction and it never goes onto the internet. It's always just on your computer. And so anywhere, any application on Steam that you're putting, you're copy pasting your key into this website, that is a level of insecurity. It's not terrible. There's, there's, it's, nothing is likely bad to happen to you 99.9999%, right? But if you're dealing with money, you don't even want a 0.01%. So. <laughs> um, so there you go. Um, that's why on Steam Peak, we like Steam Keychain because Steam Connect, you put in, copy paste something into um, the website. It's fine. On Steam Keychain, you don't have to. And so that's even better. And it's faster. Because all you have to do is log into Steam Keychain with this, a password. Now, in this case, it's an actual password. You log in, and it's active. And any transaction you do, you're just like, click, click, click. I do them all. It's fast. Uh, and it's easy. And Steam Keychain is just saying, yep, he has the key. He has the key. He has the key. And, um, and it's just really fast and easy to use. So that's my pitch it's not even our product it's another person's product they don't make any money off of it they just wanted it to exist so they created it and uh it's a great thing to have so if you go to the uh the services and you download keychain otherwise you're going to need to keep your key code handy and drop copy paste it especially in mobile <laughs> 
there you go. That was the that was a thing that I know that confuses a decent amount of people. I wanted to explain it, hopefully in the easiest way possible. Specifically, the key situation, Paul. Does that make a lot more sense? Are there any? Yeah, it does. No, no, I've got the keys sorted now. Okay. Uh, yeah, it basically is delegating different levels of authority. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and the main difference is one has financial authority or very important authority. The other one has less important authority. Like you can make votes, you can comment. And the other one is just the one that you do to redo the keys. <laughs> so there you go. And if all you have is one key, the chance is that it's the owner, it's the master key. You want to stop using that. You want to put that key into Steam Keychain, and Keychain will use it to figure out you're active and you're posting, and it will tell you you're active and you're posting. And it will not save your master. So you need to keep your master probably even off your computer. Put it in like a safe. Now, if you don't have any money in your wallet, it's fine. I mean, put it on your computer. I don't care. It doesn't, it's not going to be a bad <laughs> So, but you can put it in your wallet. And you're in your safe or somewhere very safe. So, I mean, I even have to, there's no government, there's no company, we don't have access to your money, no government has access to your money, no one in the world, period, has access to your money unless they have your owner or your active keys. So, if you're gonna have something in a will, put that in the will. You know, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I got to deal with the little one. <laughs> it's she's fine. she's having a bit of a meltdown. <laughs> it's fine. If someone has watched all the way through, I'm sure they're they're <laughs> happy about the the fun, cute distraction, right? <laughs> yep. This is why I don't get any work done during daylight hours. <laughs> all right. Uh, we are going to end it, um, there. Um, uh, you can mute people, you can save to favorites. Steam Peak um, has this uh, Wii content. We do not allow people to see kind of like adult content or what would be called not safe for work posts. Um, they are hidden by default. Uh, you can go in and show them by default or do this click to show. Um, but you have to have an account to go in and do these other two options. So uh, that will save you if you're at work. That will save you if you're allowing a, a kid to use this. You would go into here and hit hide, and then you would lock it to hide. Um, and then you would not give them the um, active key. Um, you'd give them the posting key. And because to unlock it, you'd have to have the active key. Plus, you want a 12-year-old playing around with money at that age. <laughs> they're not going to make no. decisions so um uh, there's so many other little fun features but i feel like i feel like there's a decent amount of things that i have shared that are not new user type things so don't worry if you didn't grasp every everything if someone's watching and didn't grasp everything don't worry about that uh, where we'll do different videos on the site. We will add conf information. In fact, if you go to about, um, I hit the wrong button. If you go to about, uh, we have, you go to about, about is not working. That is some, this is my job to do data testing here. Sorry, about. Um, it could just be slow internet too. There is an FAQ, so this should answer any more of your other questions, we believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will, and just ask us things. Go to our account, Steam Peak, ask us questions. We will add maybe to the FAQ. We will do little videos about it. Uh, um, basically, you've learned a crazy amount, and now I am going to stop sharing. <laughs> and uh, stop the recording and do another question and answer video with